Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad and welcome to this special video in which I will teach you how to find US clinical experience or rotations for free. We will talk about the types of US clinical experiences, the requirements, financial aspects, and finally we will talk about how to find these US clinical experiences for free. And I'll also share a list of rotations you can apply to. And let's start with the type of US clinical experiences, which I like to divide into electives and observerships. And you'll also see some people use the term externships, but I'll lump that under the observership category. Let's start with electives. What are electives? Generally, electives are rotations you do at the last year of your medical school in US institutions while you're still a medical student. So you do tasks similar to US medical student in their final year of medical school. So you take history, do physical exam, write notes, you get access to the medical records. If you're in a surgery rotation, you'd be able to scrub in, so you'd be able to help the team more, maybe get some suturing. So technically you function as a US medical student. On the other hand, observerships are rotations you do technically anywhere with a physician in the US. So it doesn't have to be technically in a big institution. And you don't have to be a medical student at the time of doing your observership. So you could be a medical student or you could be a graduate. For most observerships, you're not allowed to examine patients, take history, get access to the medical records. If you're in a surgery rotation, you're mainly observing, you can't scrub in. So that limits your ability a little bit to contribute to the team. However, there is a subtype of observership, some people call it externship, where it's more hands-on. And how much hands-on will differ significantly between different observerships and externships. So some externships might allow you to take take history, do physical exam, but not get access to the medical records. Or you can help the team take history, do physical exam, but you can't scrub in if you're doing a surgery rotation. So the range of how much hands-on you are and how much you can do during an observership or an externship will vary significantly between different physicians and different states and different institutions. Now, obviously everyone is excited to do electives because as you can see after this short description, you'd be able to do more hands-on stuff. You would function as a US medical student. However, that comes with drawbacks because now the bar is higher when you're doing an elective. The expectation of what you should do is much higher than an observer. So you have to meet these expectations if you wanna get the most benefit out of your rotation and get good LORs. And I've seen that firsthand with IMGs who come to the US on their first elective and because they don't know the system, they can't function well and they can't impress people because again, now the expectation is a fourth year medical student. They're not comparing you to a first year medical student, they're comparing you to a fourth year US medical student. So you have to function not only on their level but above to really impress them with your capabilities. On the other hand, in an observership, the bar is much lower. There is not much comparison that is happening and there is not much expectation from an observer and although in most instances you can't take history do a physical exam you can still impress your mentors during an observership by asking the right questions by suggesting treatment plans next steps in the management of patients especially when you're on internal medicine or family medicine rotations or any non-surgical rotation so you have to really think about what is the ideal rotation for you based on your specific situation because again although electives are much better because you can get to do more things during the rotation you have to make sure you are on that level of expectation and performance so you can get good LORs and good leave good impression after that elective. Now let's talk about requirements for US clinical experiences and I'll start with electives. As I mentioned, electives require you to be a student at the time of doing the elective. So if you apply, let's say in June and your rotation is in October, but you graduate in September, that will not work. You have to be a student at the time of doing your elective. So that means you have to do a lot of planning to apply before, meet all the requirements and do the elective and then graduate. Another requirement of electives that is not very strict and you will see some institutions have it some don't is the step one so if you're planning to do electives you have to do a lot of planning to not only uh, be a student at the time of doing your elective but also have finished step one and passed it because you don't want to fail on your step one the third requirement that is getting more and more common is being part of the vslo the vslo is a platform through which you apply to electives in the u.s and many institutions participate in the vslo and some institutions don't take students if their schools are not part of the VSLO. So if you're an IMG, there is a high likelihood that your school is not part of the VSLO. And in that case, you should look for institutions that accept students that are not part of the VSLO, or you should convince your institution to join the VSLO. And I'll leave in the link of this video, a full list of uh, US electives that accept students from non-VSLO schools. Another requirement of electives that again might vary between institutions is malpractice insurance. So you're covered if a mistake happens as a result of you. Sometimes that insurance is part of your rotation fee so when you pay the fee for the electives that's included and they get you that malpractice insurance sometimes they ask you to get malpractice insurance and you can buy it easily
easily online. And finally, the application form and proof of certain immunizations. Now let's talk about the requirements for observerships or externships. Since you're doing less on an observership, the requirements are much less strict. The first thing is you don't have to be a medical student at the time of doing your rotation. You could be a student or a graduate. Some of them might require to have step one or step two, but most of them do not. Also, you don't need to be part of the VSLO. You don't need to have malpractice insurance in most cases, but most of them will still have you do an application form and provide proof of your immunization. Now let's talk about the financial aspect of electives and observerships. The price of electives vary significantly between institutions. Some institutions might charge you a few hundred dollars while other institutions might charge you five or six thousand dollars just for the fee of the elective. Some of them also charge you an application fee that is non-refundable. So even if you're not accepted for the elective, you lose that fee. But that fee is usually not high. It's usually a few hundred dollars. But one thing to keep in mind when considering the cost of electives is the cost of living during the elective. Because let's say you're doing a rotation in New York, the cost of renting an apartment or renting a room in New York is very expensive. Especially that you're only coming for a month. So if you're in expensive cities, you might be paying around $2,000 just for renting a room during that one month period. In less expensive cities, it's between 700 to 1500. Uh, but of course, that will vary significantly based on where in the city you're living. Are you okay with roommates or you want to have your own apartment? How nice the apartment is? So you'll see a big variability in the cost of renting based on what you want. Now let's talk about the financial aspects of observerships. You have the observership fee, which could be free or could be thousands of dollars. The same applies to observerships when you come anywhere in the US, you have to stay in that place and the cost of renting and the food and the transportation and the internet and the phone also is not cheap. You also have to add to that the cost of your flight and the visa. Generally, when you're doing a rotation, you're on a B1, B2, but you know, there are so much variability in the immigration law. If you have questions specifically related to the visa, I recommend you reach out to a lawyer. But generally, when you're doing a rotation, you're on a B1, B2 visa. Now let's go to the million dollar question. How can you find these rotations for free? And I'll start with electives. So electives are generally found on the institution's websites. Unlike observerships, which we will touch about next, you generally don't find them by contacting physicians because there is a formal process of applying to elective through the medical school of that institution. So your search has to be mainly online on the institution's websites. So how can you search for that? So you go to Google and type either visiting medical student or international visiting medical student or electives for international medical students, visiting medical student opportunities or clerkships for international medical students or any combination of these keywords. And then you add to that the names of the institutions you're interested in rotating at. And there generally should be a page on their website that gives you all the information you need to know about that elective. From the timeline, how far ahead should you apply? What are the requirements? Do you need step one or step two? Do you, what is the fee of that elective? And whether your school need to be part of the VSLO for them to accept you. And our team at The Match Guy likes to make your life easy. And that's why we built a very comprehensive list of electives you can get in the US from top institutions. It has the requirements, the fees, whether they accept IMGs, whether they accept non-VSLO students, in addition to the link of that elective so you can check these things yourself as well. And I'll leave the link to this extremely useful page in the description of this video. Just one thing I want you to be very, very mindful about is the timeline. Some people think, oh, I can just search today and I can get the elective uh, next month. And that is not usually how it works because usually the timeline for applying to electives is month before your desired date. So if you want to do it in July, they might ask you to sub submit your application in January. And sometimes you might be missing the deadline by a day or two. So that's why I highly, highly recommend to search for these deadlines for the timeline at least a year before your desired date. So you know when exactly the uh, deadline for submitting your application, what are the requirements, get everything ready before the deadline. Another way of finding electives in the US is your school connections. Sometimes your school might have relationships with US medical schools. And there is an easy process for you to do electives at these institutions through your medical school connections. So either ask your seniors who did rotations in the US or reach out to the administrators in your school to figure out which schools is your school affiliated with. And finally, when it comes to connections for securing electives, they don't usually work as well because there is a very formal process through the medical school. So in rare circumstances, they might work, but generally you have to go through the formal application and your connection might give your application a push, but generally you have to apply through the platform 
platform and submit your application, meet the requirements, and then they let you know if you are accepted or not. Also, a hack for electives. Generally, the summer months are very busy and you might not be accepted during the summer months because US medical students are doing rotations and sub eyes during that time period. So if you're not in a rush to do these rotations during these months, you might consider doing your rotations uh, anytime between November and May because during these months, US medical students don't usually do sub eyes. Now let's talk about how to secure observerships or externships for free. The first way is similar to the electives, which is through a Google search. So you go on Google and search observerships or externships for medical students or graduates and then type the name of the institution and find the appropriate page and apply online. But you will find that the observership programs in most institutions is not as robust as the elective program. So some institutions have an observership program, but they don't have a website or they don't have an application process. It's more like hidden process that somebody has to sponsor you. But you can still find some institutions that accept people for observerships through an application process. And to my knowledge, Cleveland Clinic, for example, is one of them. Now, the second way of securing observerships for free is through LinkedIn or email. And I find LinkedIn to be a more powerful way of getting these observerships. So what you can do on LinkedIn is go and search for physicians within your network or second uh, connection that might have went to the same medical school as you, or they came, their hometown is the same hometown as you and are practicing physicians in the US. Then you can connect with them and send them a request to see if they can accept you to do an observership with them. You have to keep in mind that the yield of this pathway is very low because you can see that there is not much incentive for these physicians to do the observership with you or to have you rotate with them other than you know the goodness of their heart. But you can understand that you bring liability to them because if a mistake happens as a result of you being there or some patient complains about something you did, that causes them problems. So don't get disappointed if you're not getting much responses from these messages you're sending. Also something to consider when sending these messages is to offer payment to these physicians for their time. And in that case, that might incentivize some physicians to get some compensation for the time they're spending with you. And finally, there are companies that offer rotations. Of course, that's going to be the easiest pathway because you don't have to do much searching for that. But on the other hand, you have to pay a fee for you know them securing the rotation for you. There is wide variability in the quality of the rotations between different companies. A rotation with a residency program would probably be better than a rotation without a residency program because now you're building connections with a program that might possibly take you for their residency. A combination of inpatient outpatient would be ideal and of course make sure that you get an LOR after your time uh, with these physicians. But some companies including us at The Match Guy, we don't guarantee you an LOR if you don't perform well because we're not going to have our physicians lie just to give you an LOR. So if you perform well, you deserve to get an LOR but if somebody does not perform well, you know, they don't deserve deserve that LOR. And finally, check the experiences of prior students who did rotations with these companies. Did they learn during these rotations? Did they find the uh, rotation to be valuable? Was it overcrowded? Some rotations might have so many students and you don't have much exposure to the physician and you won't be learning as much. So just keep all these things into consideration when looking for a rotation through a company. Now, if you're applying to the match this cycle or next cycle, make sure to take advantage of our free match resources, amazing resources for match applicants that include an ELS application template, uh, 20 plus personal statement examples, uh, guides on how to ace your interview, 200 plus interview questions and sample answers to that. So you will get access to all these fully for free by signing in the link that I'll leave in the description below. And if you need any help with your match application, your personal statement, ELS application, uh, interview prep, advising, anything related to the match, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the Match Guy team. We would be honored to help you through your journey and make your success story as one of the many success stories we have. And you can talk to our customer support team fully for free to explore these packages and how we can best help you. And I'll leave the link for these packages and the link to schedule the consultation in the description of this video. I hope this video helped you navigate the process of rotations, how to think about them, which rotation is the ideal for you, what you need and how to find one for free. If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your colleague who's also interested in rotations in the US so they can learn about that. If you have any questions about rotations, the match, USMLE tutoring, don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at thematchguy.com. I wish you best luck on your journey. Don't miss this video that I recorded on how to find research positions in the US. Wish you best of luck and see you in future videos.